your Jesus Christ, look at your shoes. Did it go to the hospital? today from Centralia, Pennsylvania. This is a place I've been fascinated with for quite some time and today is the day I'm actually able to check it out and with a personal tour guide to boot, Jay from JP Videos is here. I'm here. Retro fans, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna head out and just check things out we're gonna see graffiti highway I know it's covered up now sadly and a few other places so join us now as we check out Centralia let's go yeah so after being back here after a few months I did notice that not only is there a lot less people here but a lot less cars on the road nearly all the areas are posted for no parking so Keep that in mind if you come here. There's still some places you could park, but I would not park along the main roadway here. Behind the scenes, JP videos at work. Okay, so this is Graffiti Highway, or what used to be Graffiti Highway. It is no more. It's almost depressing to see it. Why is it like humps of dirt? Those are all truckloads of dirt. So they just dump they, it. They, they and... spread it out. <laughs> okay. They announced on the news they're going to spread it out and plant trees or whatever to kind of bring it back to nature, but I don't see that happening. The good news is that they didn't rip up the highway, so it could be cleared off in the future, but this is to keep people away from coming here because it's now private property. It used to be state owned. Now it's privately owned. I'm gonna go on this hump in front of you. I'm gonna put up the drone in here. How many times do you think I'm gonna fall today? Probably not as many as you think. Holy cow. 
calibrate the compass, which is my little dance I gotta do here. Dance? Yeah, you gotta spin it around. Calibrate the compass. Hopefully not fall. Look at that, taking pictures. Alright, I'm gonna bring it close to you, but I'm not gonna hit you, so don't worry. Here's what that sees, if you see it or not. Yeah, that's the part I always wondered about. What, like how it works with the controls and what you see. Yeah, so it's like a video game. The screen is just for your image. It shows up to 127 feet high right now. I'm gonna venture over to another hump. <laughs> Oh my lord. <laughs> Look, here's a tiny little sliver of graffiti highway hooking out from underneath this gravel hump. Some of the graffiti was really good too. Really artistic. There's the drone. Checking things out from the aerial view. Come back up here by me. I'm gonna get a shot up here. Let me get a running start. I see you stand next to me. So I know a little bit here and I can share that the fire started May 1962. Centralia was a coal mining town. That was the main industry here was coal mining. And what happened is that every year for Memorial Day for the celebration of the town, they would burn the town's trash just to kind of clean it up, make it look nice for Memorial Day. They'd burn the trash up in this area here in an old open pit of where it was a formerly mined area. Well, on that particular time when they burned the trash, the trash ignited a 
vein of coal that was exposed. That vein of coal went underground. That's where the fire went. They didn't realize it at the time until the 1980s, or I believe 1980, when Todd Dombowski, he was a 12-year-old boy who was playing in his grandmother's backyard along the main roadway. The ground subsided. He fell into it, and it went down hundreds of feet, and the temperatures down there were hundreds of degrees. His cousin actually saved his life. That's when they knew something was wrong, and they made multiple attempts ever since that time to try to extinguish the fire with water, with material, with excavating. And to this day, June 2020, the fire is still burning. It's no longer burning under Centralia. It has moved away on the outskirts of it, which I'm going to show Ellen a little bit later on. But the fire still burns today, and it ended up affecting more than just one town. Centralia here was the heart of it. Just below Route 61 is the town of Burnsville. That was forced out of the eminent domain as well. So right now there's five houses left in Centralia. They made a deal with the government that they could live out the rest of their lives here. Once they do pass away, those homes will be demolished as part of eminent domain, just like this one here, Carr Walmer's home. Eventually there won't be any, any homes left here, just the roadways, empty streets. Rumor is once all the homes are gone, they're gonna come back in and continue mining it, extract what is left underneath the ground. Time will tell if that's gonna happen, but the, the concern right now though is that the town of Ashland, which is just outside of Centralia, may be the next town in the future to have the same demise happen because the fire is moving in that direction. And they did say there's enough coal to burn for another 200 years. Wow. Which is kind of scary to think, you know, and in modern day te technology, you're wondering why don't they put it out? I can't answer that question obviously, but I would hope that something does happen to prevent that from happening in the future with, with Ashland because it's unfortunate that people had to pick up, relocate, and just kind of start over in a brand new town. So I knew it was still burning, but I actually didn't know that it was moving. Yeah, I'm going to show you where it's at now. It's just um, maybe less than a mile away from here. It's still burning. Thank you, Jay. Uh, <laughs> the front of the house was like, like right here. You'd be facing the front of the house. It was a two-story home. The mayor's name was Carl Wolmer. He died, his daughter lived here for a few months and she had to leave to eminent domain. They tore it down, I think 2018. So this is where the mayor's house, the mayor of Centralia, yeah, one of the former mayors. used to be. So you can see the pipe sticking out. He had a swing set, there was a swing gear. It's like they cut in the middle of the trees around here. Oh yeah, I see. He's saying that there was a swing for the mayor's daughter here. Now across the street, there's a fence there. There used, to be row, there used to be four houses there. Those were the first four to get demolished when the mine fire started. They drilled over uh, boreholes to uh, vent the gases and also to check temperature reading. One of the boreholes are over here. There's actually, there's one there. This is a borehole? Yeah, they used it for temperature readings and some of them were used for ventilation of the gases. It goes down a couple hundred feet. There's some bigger, some are smaller. These were these smaller ones were for temperature readings, the larger ones for ventilating the gases and steam out of those mines. But they're all around the property and all around the town of Centralia. So wall is the Clinton Way. It was the BFW here at one time. And right where that crumbling cinder block is is where it used to be a bell there like a significance of it and the time capsule was up here. So 
the time capsule is buried right here. They had to remove it several years ago because people dug it up and destroyed some of the items. The rest of the remains that were in it were in a, I think a firehouse in Wilburton. And that was where the bell was for the VFW. The VFW was basically back there. So it was a Centralia time capsule? Yeah. There was miners hats in it? And... Yeah, just things from the history of the town, you know, like different you know, like tools for mining mostly, mostly related to mining stuff. The only thing you'll notice is how narrow the homes are because they had homes along both sides of it. One of the remaining homes of Centralia, how many are left? Five. Five, there's five. There's a couple more I'll show you later that have supports along the side of it made out of brick to help keep tipping over a bit so narrow. So of course the street we were just on used to be lined with houses. Yeah, pretty much all these streets here. Mostly row homes. Jay said there was a sinkhole that opened up around last year sometime. And also where we are, the fire never made it down this low because the water table under the ground stopped it. So they evacuated the whole town, but it wasn't necessary to do the half towards the church because the water table on the ground stopped the fire in that direction. So a lot of people don't realize that, but there's only one part of the town that was affected. Jay also mentioned that you are allowed to come and visit Centralia and walk around, but some of the areas are posted. No trespassing, so you do need to be aware and respectful of that if you do visit here. So I'm actually standing in what used to be some basketball courts, outdoor basketball courts, for the high school here in Centralia. It's just asphalt now. One teeny tiny reminder of the past. You can see here like the fall line. The tender bowl would be right there. The foul line. Yeah, I see that. He shoots, he scores. I think there was two sets of uh, courts here. The wood structure right there was part of the baseball field. What part? That's my home plate. That's the okay. That's the backstop. Is home that, plate. Yeah, my home gotcha. Plate. <laughs> So this is the only remaining church in Centralia. It's private property, so we're not gonna go any closer, but it actually is used for services every now and again. There are still some areas of Centralia that have graffiti. This is some kind of maybe retaining wall uh, that is covered with graffiti.
Ah, yes. Booker and Turd have been commemorated here. Corona survivor. Trump's been here too. Trump was here? Hmm. Do you think the spray paint is made from real gold? That's about the best. So this is the municipal building or the town hall for Centralia. If you look here at these bay doors, there's actually a fire truck in there that is still in use. It's like so unrecognizable. Wait, what are we looking for? There's areas where there's steam coming out and it's only like a small condensed area. I'm trying to find it, but I don't see it yet. We're looking for steam still coming out of the ground. Holy crap! Okay, so this is funny, not funny. I always fall in every video, and I fell, but I actually got pretty hurt. Caution. 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 Check this out. And I ripped my pants. And now we have to go back to the car because I'm injured. You're, Jesus Christ, look at your shoes. Did you go to the hospital? <laughs> it doesn't hurt. That's, Jesus. <laughs> Come sit, like, sit down here with your foot hanging out and try to clean it up. I really wipes too. Give me your camera for now because... <laughs> Okay, so welcome back to a new day. You're probably wondering what's going on. So, some things have transpired over the last 48 hours. I do look different. Ellen is wearing different footwear, which will explain why, and RJ's here. So, where my last clip ended, I was searching for the areas of steam here, which we did locate today. While I was looking for them, Ellen was behind me along the shoulder of the road. I heard a loud skidding sound. What happened is she was wearing like sketcher type sneakers, slid on the gravel on the side of the road and actually cut herself open pretty severely to the point where I had to take her back and she had going to the hospital the next day. If you want to see how bad the injury is, you could check her channel. She filmed her own injury. It was so bad that it was actually squirting you know what out of her wounds. It was pretty bad and Thankfully, I was prepared in the car, I had paper towels, we kept it, you know, compressed on it, kept it elevated, got the bleeding to stop. But not only her foot, but her knee sustained some pretty severe injuries. RJ took her to the hospital, and they said it was too late for her to get stitches, but they did clean the wound, you know, dressed it, whatever they did to make sure it doesn't get infected. But she is here, though. She did return. She is a trooper. She is in pain, but she wants to see this trip through. <laughs> But if you want to see how gory it was, just check her, her video. It will be linked down below. It was pretty bad. I'm surprised she's even here today. But with that I'm said, doing okay. With that said, though, we are back. We did find the steam. I did bring the temperature gun. We're going to get some readings. Despite being a summer day, around 80 degrees, kind of humid, there is still steam coming out of these holes. So it's her first time seeing evidence of the underground mine fire. And I'm pretty excited to show it to her. So let's head it over there. Head on over there. Get some readings and we'll see what her thoughts are on it as well. So 
Let's continue on with this journey. Okay, everybody, I am back. <laughs> Had a little mishap that you saw on video. I did get cut up pretty badly. Yes, she did. <laughs> but I live to tell the tale. I am okay today. And we are back to finish up this Centralia video. <laughs> and um, just see a couple more places. Right now we're somewhere where steam is actually coming out of the ground. This is what we were looking for the other day when I had the horrifying incident. <laughs> Um, and injured myself, but it was like a murder scene. Don't let her, don't let her fool you. There was gallons of blood all over the place. Okay, not gallons. Quarts. Pints. Lots of blood. Okay. Okay, if I can just get through this. Um, so now we're here, um, and we actually have found the spot where steam is coming out of the ground underneath Centralia. So we are going to check that out now. I also have a vlog of my experience uh, getting injured and meeting RJ and having RJ take me to the hospital for our first explore together. <laughs> uh, so please uh, check that video out as well. I will link to it. So let's go. Let's go check out the steam. Full steam ahead. Let's go. I am leading the way. We're gonna let Ellen go first, so she just fall. This time will be on Ken. Oh, good. I'm not the only one who falls. I think I was wondering what hand has a bracelet. Fall risk. <clears throat> yes, I've only shown that like 30 times now. stuff we're moving to from it. Yeah. There's more coming out right there, Jay. Oh, yeah, there's a little one there. As long as we have on top of here, there's like big ones. Yeah. We still got to get back and do that. Maybe in the fall. Get rid of the gun. We could scan that and see. It's hard to see. Here, I'm going to do it for you. You got to tap the focus on it so it stays. So the temperature reading on this is 121 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. Or 48.8 degrees Celsius for you metric people. Ooh, that's hot. <laughs> is it like a sauna? Yeah. It's like a, it's basically like a steam room. That's what it is. It's, it's <clears throat> there's a very slight odor of sulfur very faint but not bad that smells like you know like the mine tour we did yeah that's, that's what it smells like. i want to get closer you got to feel it look she's flying folks she wings out <laughs> And warm your rump? Yeah, like a fire. I am next to the steam now. I can definitely feel the warmth. It's toasty. It is. It's crazy. 127 I hit. Wow, it gets really hot. Yeah, mm. if you stick your hand in there, it gets in me. Almost You'll start sweating. Sweat you can see the condensation that builds up and just keeps dripping. Lots of, uh, you know what? Hmm? Don't say so, it too loud. So just a reminder, the fires underground have been burning since... 1962. 1962. Yep. Still going. It's amazing to think about. And there's enough, enough coal underneath the ground for it to burn for another 250 years. 
that's even 109 degrees right there and there's not even steam coming out of it. Mm -hmm. So in the winter time, snow never accumulates here. It's always melted. I'm gonna go up to the other one, up the one and see how hot that one is again. Yeah, that one's cleaning pretty good over there. Yeah, that's one. I don't think there was anything else over this. The, the one you said over there, does that have steam coming out of it? Yeah, it did when we were here last time. Look at Nature's oh, carpet. You just wring it out. Mine water fresh. I gotta get away from the heat. Ah! Thank you, RJ. There's some coal. For me. The other yeah, coal he, me. yes, the other coal he found I discarded because, well, he discarded it because we were too busy climbing up a mountainside. But this coal is my souvenir from coal country. Thank you, RJ. That <laughs> one's too big. <laughs> I'll take the smaller piece. That actually feels like it's too heavy to be coal. Not as hot. No. What's that one? It's just around 100. I can't get any deep pockets. This is actually collapsing though from the uh, moisture. It's deteriorating the dirt and causing it to collapse on itself. Yeah, that definitely looks worse. Yeah, look at that one shooting out right there. Mm -hmm. huh. I'll have to see if we can find that tree that Adam knocked over to. It was right in this area. <laughs> what? He knocked over a tree. Yeah, I'll show you. Oh, there's the tree he knocked down. Why did he knock a tree down? He's a tree killer. <laughs> That's the opposite of a tree hugger. Yeah. He hates trees. This one right here. He hates them in a passion. <laughs> Still laying on the ground. Uh, I'm just hostage. Oh, yeah. there he is. Okay. We thought of someone walking up there. He made so much noise. I'm like, it's either a ghost or a big animal. And no, it's a little pheasant or fowl, whatever it is. He made a lot of noise, though. I'm yelling, don't jump! Don't jump! <laughs> so he's up here hanging out by the steam pocket. It probably stays warm if it gets cold. and Nobody's going to really bother him here. Looks pretty healthy. Yeah. Get some meat under its feathers. It's coming down towards you. Yeah, I see that. He's walking through the steam. He's gonna oh, get cooked up. Cool it's giving a dramatic effect. Yeah. He might jump. Mm -hmm. He's off his gourd. <laughs> hey, look at this. Look what I found. Oh. What is it? Like medical forceps. Yikes. 
those initials CSR. Huh. Caesar. Yeah. <laughs> kind of got blurry, but it's all right. Never know what you'll find in the woods. It's true. Especially in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I found an RJ in the woods. In flip flops. Let's go see the geyser. Okay, something interesting to note about this house here is it used to be row houses, surrounded by row houses. Um, it, you can tell it's very skinny. It was wedged in between two other houses, but when the other houses were torn down, this one needed to have supports. So there you see the brick supports on the side. Did your Bob bark on the phone? Yeah. So our last stop today in Centralia is Big Mine. We're on Centralia. Our last stop today on the video outside is Centralia. right outside of Centralia. This is Big Mine Run Geyser, which goes 300 feet deep. It is here to relieve water pressure from underground. In the abandoned mine. In the abandoned mine. <laughs> you guys can tell I don't do these kinds of videos. <laughs> I have some prompting from Jay. Smells of sulfur here at the geyser.
Australia. It was quite the experience, what with the injury <laughs> and all the repercussions involved. But I'm still glad I came. Awesome experience. Just being able to see a place that I've read about, that I've watched videos on for many years now it was very a very cool experience, you know. I was able to actually feel the steam come out of the ground, see these places that used to be. It was definitely an enjoyable thing and I'm thankful to JP Videos and RJ78 Productions for coming out with me today. You'll want to check out their videos as well, of course. <laughs> and if you're new to my channel, please make sure to Subscribe, ring the notification bell, hit the all, hit the all button so you know when my next videos are coming out. We'll see you next time. Smash that like button. How's it going? I am not gonna remember all of that. You want me to say it for well, I'll at least say it's big, what? Big mine run geyser, goes 300 feet deep, and it drains. Big run? Big mine run. Big, mi big mine run geyser. geyser. That's basically a 300 foot borehole. Oh, he said borehole. 66 degrees right here. That's the ground temperature, ambient temperature. And right, we're gonna on the body here and see she is 81 degrees she is cold-blooded <laughs> it was um, quite an experience <laughs> one that I will remember forever and have scars <laughs> to show <laughs> right okay cut <laughs> uh, all right everybody this concludes <laughs> Getting hot over here. Getting hot in here. Getting hot in here. Take off all your clothes. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, that's it. That's enough of that. Yeah. Okay, now I know I'm in the north because RJ's never heard of okra. <laughs> Isn't that a TV show? <laughs> Those talk show things. It's a vegetable and it's really good fried. Come on. Okra. It's good. We love it grits. in the south. What? Grits. Yes, grits, but okra is like... That northern grits. What about succotash? You know what that is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, You're excused, Ben.